Another great tool that I use in class is PhotoStory 3. What I use this for is for presentations. Um, this is kind of like a PowerPoint type of a tool, um, but I like it a lot better. I'm so done with PowerPoint presentations. There's so many of them that are just dull, 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 and the problems that come with it. PhotoStory can help eliminate a lot of those problems and make the presentations a little bit better. To get to PhotoStory, just go into Google and type in PhotoStory. The very first link will be PhotoStory 3. It'll be a download option. The window will look like this. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download it, and it'll just install on your computer. It's a relatively small program, um, but it's very, very effective and useful for classroom use. I use it both within the class and for projects for students to use outside of class. After you've downloaded it, go ahead and open it up. And it's going to open up to this screen here. And you're going to want to say, begin a new story. Um, if you've already been working on a story, then you can say edit a project. Or if you want to view a project, you can say play a story. But we're going to go ahead and go to begin a new story. The first one that you come to is the window where you're going to start adding photos and images. And basically what we're doing with the Photo Story 3 is we're creating like a, a Ken Burns type documentary um, where there's going to be images and we're going to do narration over the top of it. This first screen is where we put the images in. So we're going to go through and we're going to collect the images. They're either going to be pictures that have been taken by the students or drawn of, by the students and then they've been turned into digital files or they could be pictures that they found off the internet. Um, anyway, get those pictures and you just import them from here. The image importation process is very similar to other image importing processes that you've seen. Um, it'll open up this window, you find where your image is located, and you're just going to click on it and you're going to hit OK, and that's going to import the picture into the Photo Story program. Once you've imported a picture, you can then edit it. There's a couple of editing um, options for you where you can adjust the color, you can rotate the picture, or you can do some special effects. And you do that special effects or different editing and cropping in the edit function. In the edit window, there are three tabs. Uh, the first tab is where you can rotate or crop the image to just where you want. Um, the next tab is auto fix, where it's going to automatically fix things like uh, color balance and density balance and such. And then you also have add effects, where you can scroll, use the pull down menu and add different special effects. For effect, I have selected negative as one of the effects because it's easy to see here as an example. Once you're finished with this stage, you're just going to go to Next. You can come back to the stage and add more pictures later. So at this point, we're going to go to the Next function. At this stage, this is where you can add text to your slide. Um, you can put in whatever text you want. It's going to be in the little box there on the right-hand side, and you can align it top, middle, bottom, left, center, right. Um, you can add, change the color, whatever you'd like. Um, if you're going to view the presentations through the Photo Story program itself or through your Windows Movie Player on your computers, go ahead and add the text here. If you're going to load it to YouTube, the text will sometimes get a little fuzzy and be hard to read. And what I would recommend if that's the case, YouTube has a function where you can add annotations or add words to the videos as they're moving along. And I would recommend using their annotation tool for adding the words at that point if you are going to use YouTube. This stage of the process also allows you to do special visual effects to your slides. They're the same ones that were in the previous function. This is just another place that you can do that. And they're right beneath the window here. And I went ahead and made a negative of that negative image that we had before here. So again, you can see the effect. Once you're finished adding text or special effects to your slides um, in this stage, it's time for us to go ahead and go next and go to the next stage where we're going to start adding audio. This is the stage where you're going to add audio to the presentation. Uh, this is the feature that I like the best about this because it allows students to present material in a comfortable setting um, where they're allowed to make mistakes. So when you're recording this, when, you, when you're giving a presentation in front of everybody and you mess up, you can't redo it. At this process, if you mess up or you fumble over a word, you just hit stop and then delete the narration and try again um, until you have it just right. And that's what the red button is record. The blue square button is stop, and then the delete narration is the little back arrow. The box underneath those three buttons is a little space where you can type in little notes to help you remember what you want to say. Another function of this step is that the custom motion, which is right beneath the image. The custom motion is, well, is the area where you get to decide where the picture is going to be focused on throughout the narration of the slide, and it creates a little bit of motion here. You don't have to have any motion, but you can create that here in the custom motion portion. In the custom motion screen, there are two tabs. There's 
motion and duration, which is going to determine where the image is going to be focused on and how long the slide will be up. And you have transitions, which allows the opening and closing sequence to do special effects. Uh, for the motions, if you, if you click the top right hand little box, you toggle that on, you can set exactly where it is that you want the opening, opening scene to be and where it will slowly move to at the end of the scene. After you add the narration is that you wanted for each of your slides and your custom motions and your transitions, um, you're finished with this stage. You can come back to it and make changes still, as I've mentioned before, but once you're finished, just go ahead and click Next. This stage is where you can add background music. So you're going to have your narration and you can have background music playing at the same time. I discourage students from using this because generally um, it's just going to be a distraction. It's got to be done very, very carefully to make it really work well. Um, so I discourage the students to using this unless they are putting it in like a credits section where they can have maybe a little bit of music here. But there's two different ways that you can add music to this. One is that you can select music. Uh, if you're going to put it into YouTube, you've got to make sure you don't select any music that is copyrighted by somebody else, otherwise it will not be allowed to be used. Um, or you can create music that is already saved as part of the photo story programming and you can, there's a little handful of uh, just options that you can use. Once you're finished with this adding the background, if that's something that you're actually going to do, go ahead and click Next. If you're not going to add music, just go ahead and hit Next without doing anything at this point. This is the point where you need to save your story. You should be saving it all along by hitting the Save Project button on the left-hand side, and that button is there on every single stage. Uh, but when it saves there, it saves it as a WP3 file. And a WP3 file is, is only able to be read by the photo story program itself. If you want to look at your photo story, or your presentation in Windows Movie Player or on YouTube, you need to save it as a WMV file um, because those other programs don't understand what a WP3 is. It doesn't read that, that programming. Uh, so you go ahead and choose uh, Save Your Story for Playback on your computer and that's going to turn it into a WMV file. Click on Browse and determine where it is that you'd like to save it and what name you'd like to call it. And then as soon as you know where it's going to be saved and what name it's going to be called and you've, and you've made it a WMV file based on that uh, line right there next to the browse button. You've got that set. Go ahead and hit next and what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead, it's going to take a few minutes and it's going to save it as both the WP3 file and as that WMV file. It's going to be saved twice but the WMV file is the one that you can use on other programs. I would recommend that you go ahead and view these presentations through YouTube. Um, the advantage to this is that it eliminates the whole transition time between one presentation and the next where the students will come up and they'll have it on their thumb drive or maybe it's corrupted or they've got it in their email and you know sometimes it takes as much as 10 minutes to try to find the program. If you have them send the URL address to the presentation to you from YouTube, then you have all the links. You've already checked that they make sure that they all work and it's just a matter of okay we're going to the next presentation and you click the next U URL address. Uh, to do this, go into YouTube and you're going to click Upload. The Upload function is the yellow button on the right hand side. Uh, you will need to have a YouTube account to do this. Once you click Upload, it's going to open up this window where it's going to ask you to choose what is the file that you want to upload. And that's going to be the gray button near the center. Once you click that Browse function where you're going to find that the WMV file that you want to upload, this box is going to open up and you just need to scroll through and try to find where it is that you saved your, your presentation and make sure that you load the WMV file. If you load the WP3 file, it will load up to YouTube and it'll take a little while. Um, it, it could take 30 minutes um, and then it's going to take a couple hours before YouTube figures out that it can't read what it's, it, you sent it. It's going to try and try and try and try and it's going to take a long time and you're going to be frustrated. Make sure you upload the WMV file. It'll take a lot less time and it'll happen more quickly and it's less of a headache. Once you do that, you've got the WMV file up to loaded to YouTube. They will process it and then you will have a URL address that you can access your presentation from. Photo story can be used in a number of ways. One, it can be used as an instructional tool, much as like I've used it now to show students how to go through a process at home. Second way it can be used is in class where in a block period, a small group of students can create a small presentation together, make illustrations. I have take pictures of their little illustrations and then when they're all uploaded, they come up and do their narration right here in class. A third way is to have students download the program themselves at home and they can create their presentations at home to be viewed in class. Um, 
where they can work out all their kinks and make all the details exactly the way they want it. This is how I've used PhotoStory in the past.